So now I have to struggle to try and summarize all the factors that I need to put forward within a few ten minutes. But I suppose the MC will bear with us. As you UPF believe that Uganda is at crossroads, but we cannot discuss the way forward now. Why? To discuss an effective way forward for Uganda, we need all parties, all stakeholders involved, the rulers and the ruled. But today we have a government in power which is corrupt. We have a government in power which is criticized, whoever criticizes the government today is taken to be committing an, an offense. We have a government trying to enact a law today whereby political discussions in the government, in the country, must be authorized by the police. An effective dif uh, discussion for the country would include all stakeholders. I've already talked about that. Sorry. Resources are so highly misappropriated and unequally distributed in the country. So much so that today we find that people in various countries, in various areas in the country, are struggling to survive and they have to live off the bread from the government. Not because they lie, but because they have to survive. How can you engage in an effective discussion with such a population? Potential government subterfuge and harassment, intimidation, cannot provide a conducive environment for discussing the way forward for Uganda today. Lack of national independence. We still believe in UUPF that the leadership of Uganda today is not held by Ugandans. We need, first of all, to reclaim our independence before Ugandans can sit down and discuss the way forward for Uganda. Although the above this is not exhaustive because of time, the, reason, the question is how, how are we going to achieve this? And our sincere belief is that by getting rid of Museveni and his entire regime, going to achieve that, one, we have to recognize the following. The regime is extensively weakened today and it is only striving on intimidation, bribing the people, coercion and divided army force. We must recognize that any, that any divisions within the opposition are playing to the hands of the incumbent, of the government. Foreign perception of Uganda has changed. Museveni is no longer that golden boy that used to be perceived in the international eyes as a golden boy to the benefit of the opposition. Today, the whole country at large, everybody all across the country is feeling the hinge. This is not the time to play political party politics, regional politics, religious politics. We need a nationalistic how can we capitalize on the current situation? UUPF still believes that Uganda can be liberated through a non-violent revolution. Why? I don't have time to go into the details, but the government will know that they have the guns, they have everything. But if all of us come together, we still can remove Museveni. The government is so intimidated. They are living under fear. And we, some people think that it's the people that fear, the loot, but also the government is in fear. We need to make them fear more. So they can fear more. In our view, we recommend, first of all, we commend the uh, actions of uh, F4 Action and Honorable uh, Chisa BCJ and the opposition at that for what they've been doing of recent. But we've got this to say. In our view, in order for progress to be made on this front, certain changes need to be embraced. We need to recognize that, I've mentioned this, this is not time for political party, tribal, or regional politics. Two, there should be no identifiable leader of the revolution in the initial stages. Otherwise, the government will easily curtail the revolution by capturing the leader. A few examples we have in the recent past. The organizers must be a fluid group without an office or proper identity. 
Two minutes, sir. Two minutes, if you can run back. Okay. The top mobilizers should not be people holding political positions. The revolution can be started or mobilized by economic social groupings. Not all of them, because we have so many in Uganda. This happened and it failed in January. We need just a cross section of them so things can move ahead. I believe in a nineteen situation whereby if a revolution was announced, if you can have it there whereby Dr. Chisholm they can lead from home instead of coming out of the street. Because when he comes out, they will hold him and things stop. So I suggest that Dr. and all the other political leaders lead from behind as opposed to leading from the front. All mobilizers of these revolutions or demonstrations need to think about the factors that potential demonstrators are talking about. People are worried that if they go for demonstrations tomorrow, they won't have money, they won't be working, their jobs offices will be closed. We need to come up with universal rules, i.e. on the days of demonstrations, landlords, commercial, residential should not charge rent to their tenants. So everyone has to contribute in one way or another. Organizations like Umeme don't expect money from the people because during the demonstration they are not working. Umeme needs to contribute to the country of Uganda. Uh, Uganda. Medical facilities need to be thought about. When people get injured, how are they going to be treated? Communal services on a medical basis must be thought through. Uh, provision of water is vital, not only for drinking, but also to curtail the effect of tear gas in Uganda. Channels of communication, both local and international, are international, important. Diaspora operation branch during the time, because you know this time will be chaotic. You need a branch abroad to work on some logistical issues. In summary, I suggest that the nonviolent revolution is the only way forward. We should avoid divisions based on religious, political, or other factors. Right. Okay. I just want to warn, uh, to quote Mr. Ron Paul in his book, The Revolution, A Manifesto. This is what he had to say. Dictatorial governments encourage racial thinking and undermines individualism because its, its very existence encourages people to organize along racial lines in order to lobby for benefits for their groups. That lobby in turn creates animosity and suspicion among all tribes each of which believes that it's not getting enough of the, of the resources. Ultimately, the community gets divided and the government prevails. Thank you. Thank, yeah. thank you, Mr. Senator. Thank you very much. Thank you, very much. thank you very much, Mr. Senator. Uh, uh, sorry, Mr. Kiwanuka.